All right, we're working on the Olympic scheduling revisited problem in distant times. Uh, this is a good moment to, to remind you that the titles of the problems we're working with generally don't matter all that much. We are revisiting a problem we've seen before here, so you may want to jump ahead past uh, this intro, although make sure you read the update and notes carefully down here. I'll go ahead and read from the start. Recall the Olympic scheduling problem. You are in charge of a live streaming YouTube channel for the Olympics that promises never to interrupt an event. So once you start playing an event, you must play only that event from the time it starts to the time it finishes. So it sounds like we're going to be looking at events and we're not going to be able to do two events at the same time. You have a list of the events where each event includes its start time, finish time, which must be after its start time, so finish times are later than start times, and expected audience value. Your goal is to make a schedule to broadcast the most valuable complete events. The best schedule is the one with the highest valued event, and in case of ties, compare second valued events and so on. So we're going to look for our highest valued event, and then if two schedules both have the, sa the same highest valued event, we'll set those aside and we'll look at second highest valued event, and if those are the same, we'll set those aside, look at third, look at fourth, look at fifth, and so on and so forth. So, for example, you obviously will include the single highest valued event in the Olympics, presumably the hockey gold medal game, no matter what else it blocks you from showing. Times when you're not broadcasting events will be filled with human interest stories that have zero value, so they're irrelevant. Uh, it says they're irrelevant, but that actually does settle one question. Like, what if you had one schedule, Schedule 1, and it's got a value 7, 3, and 2 event, and Schedule 2 has just a value 7 and 3 event, which one's better? Well, we can imagine that they have zeros filled in all the way at the bottom because they've got all these human interest stories. And so clearly Schedule 1 is the better of those two. Now here's the update. Previously, we went on to assume that all start times and finish times were distinct, and all event values were distinct. For this problem, we're going to continue to assume that all event values are distinct. So for any two values vi and vj, with i not equal to j, vi is not equal to vj. So this would be event i and event j, and because they're not the same event, they do not have the same value. Furthermore, all event start times are distinct from each other, so si is not equal to sj if i is not equal to j, and all event finish times are distinct from each other. However, not all times are distinct. One event's start time can be the same as another event's finish time. Okay, so we could have uh, two events that look like here's start and end of one event, and here's start and end of another event. Which brings up the question of whether these conflict Ah, which is in the notes. If event J, here's event J, starts at the finish time of event I, so here's the start time of event J and the finish time of event I, and they are indeed equal, they do not overlap and can both be broadcast. So these two are not overlapping. Uh, I guess we could we could draw an interval like this to, to suggest it's got an open end if we wanted to. And all times are integers. So all these start times and all these end times that we have, all the start and finish times, are integer values.